All right, in the uh, last video about the cold French fries, I had a lot of comments about it wasn't about the cold fries, it was about the disrespect to the mother and all this other stuff. And I've asked several people this question in the comments. If you remove the fries, um, does this happen? The answer is no, it doesn't happen if you remove the cold fries from the chain of events. Because the cold fries were the participating factor in the episode of the death of this young man. And once again, like I did this video, the broken desperate, like I'm trying to run these folks off. Years and years ago, I dated an attorney who was from Chicago. This woman worked in a top tier law firm, and she was all about that hood policy of disrespect. And one of the reasons that I am doing this video over these houses, if you are a person with low impulse control, if you are a person who's all about that disrespect, you will never, ever live in a neighborhood like this. It ain't happening because you have low impulse control. Once again, like I said, I saw a whole bunch of folks. It was about he disrespected his mama. Don't you say nothing. You know, I can I can remember when I was a young boy, the. Um, how no one ever talked bad about anyone's mother or father for that matter. There was an inherent respect for elders back then. And that's out the window now. And no one wants to assign blame. Like once again, and I made this point in the video. All right. So she's FaceTiming her son and trying to lodge a complaint. Once again, this, this tells me a lot about this woman. She doesn't know how to handle business. When you're lodging the complaint, you need to remove obstacles and barriers, right? She didn't do all that. She was on the phone FaceTiming with her son who, and let's, let's look at the whole pathology of this. This is why I call getting all Bruce Lee on them because Dave Chappelle had this serious when keeping it real goes wrong, which is the epitome of this behavior. And uh, in the comments, people had put in that this guy had confessed to another killing. So this goes ahead and shows that this young man who was 20 years old, so purportedly he killed someone when he was 18. Like, let's go ahead and talk about low impulse control. Years and years ago, I was dating this girl. Beautiful girl, blonde, blue eyed, but she had very low impulse control. She would just, she had been arrested five times. Her, her mugshot was online and everything. And I was just like, one of the things is when you're dealing with a person with low impulse control, this means that whatever feeling hits them at that moment, that's what they go with. And typically, you're not going to live in a multi-million dollar neighborhood with low impulse control. And I'm about to explain why. First of all, because you are owned by your feelings. You are owned by your feelings. You do not control your feelings. The people living in this neighborhood, they control their feelings. You're owned by your feelings. And this creates a scenario where, like, you know, I, I'll make a confession here. Years and years ago, I was living with my boy, Chris, and I thought that Chris had come in my room and took my CD. And I was hot about it because I really wanted to listen to that CD. But instead of getting caught up in my feelings at the moment, I was like, you know what? 
I thought it through. See, I was like, okay, Chris is letting you live here. He's helping you out. And I let it go. I never confronted Chris about that CD. A few weeks later, I went to pick up my boom box because I was so poor. I was pawning some stuff. And in my boom box that I had pawned was that CD. So if I had let my feelings own me and I would have confronted Chris and Chris in his mind was like, I didn't touch no CD, but he's accusing me of touching a CD. It would have been a bad situation. It would have been a really, really bad situation if I had let my feelings own me in the moment. But because I don't have low impulse control, I have a very high threshold to anger. It takes a lot to make me mad. It takes a whole lot to make me mad. I remember I was dating this girl probably three years and some went off and I was pissed off. And she's like, that's the first time I've ever seen you angry or bothered. It's kind of scary. So I don't have low impulse control, but the people who have low impulse control do not have the ability to sit down and think through the situation. And these people will consistently, consistently be owned by their emotions and the repercussions of because, you know, emotions. This is why when I talk about, you know, the four mandates of the disruptive man of the four mandates of the masculine frame. Number one, get your money together. Number two, get your body together. Number three, get your mental together. That's what I'm talking about. You do not want to be so emotionally triggered that you cannot sit and think that you cannot ever. Because like like I said, I saw a lot of comments in there that was just going over this whole point of the cold French fries. Like, it had nothing to do with the cold French fries. Well, it really started with the disrespect to the mother, and the folks were deeming disrespectful to his mother. And once again, I will submit in this video remove the cold French fries from the chain of events. Would this have happened? No. So the cold ass French fries are an important factor in what happened. Because if it wasn't for those cold French fries, which was the first precipitating event in the chain of actions, this whole thing wouldn't have happened. So the cold ass French fries are very, very important. Really, really important. Really, really important. And the fact that so many people miss this and want to jump around that and they were jumping, you know, we're going to skip over the cold French fries. That's one uh, event in the chain of events. We're going to skip over the mother's lack of decorum. We're going to skip over that. That's another factor in the chain of events. We're going to skip over the fact that she was FaceTime. We're going to skip over. We're going to just skip all over that and go straight to the disrespect. This disrespect. And I got something to say for all of you folks who value respect. I got something to say to you folks. If you want to be respected, do something great in life. If the only thing you have is how someone acts around you, because like I did see comments like, oh, man, people have been in New York been getting killed for less than that for years. Once again, these are low impulse individuals. They lack fundamental control. So if you're one of those people who doesn't have the ability to control yourself and if someone laughed at your mother it's enough to trigger you to violence you got a problem you got a problem like once again and this is what's funny i don't really think about being respected i don't really spend a lot of time thinking about being respected but I am deeply respected in most of the places I go. You know why? Because I conduct myself as a respectful person. See, 
The problem is that the people who are all on this disrespect tip frequently are not people who are respectable. These are people in the hood. I know y'all get tired of me talking about the folks in the hood and talk, 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 tired of me talking about poor people. But see, here's the thing. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do a whole separate video on this is when you look at the number of poor people and you start to look at their behavior you begin to get an understanding of why they are poor. I'm about to say something. It's 2022. We're about to be part of a recession. And this is the best time in history to get rich. Let me say this again. We have high inflation. Inflation went up 8.5%. So inflation came down 0.7%. Hopefully it'll be a little lower next month. We have a recession. We have collapsing industry. And if you are a person. And this is one of the things that those people who are on that disrespect tip can't do. If you can manage yourself emotionally in the face of chaos and adversity. Oh, my God, the things that you can accomplish. Like, once again, that that effort, that moment when I got hot, when I thought that Chris had messed with my CD, the simple ability. And I'm going to say it's not it's simple, but it's not common. The ability for me to sit down and to think, to think versus reacting reacting and this is one of the reasons that you see certain people certain populations in prison who go back to prison time and time again because they have low impulse control they cannot control themselves they're emotionally unregulated they're reckless and man Oh, my God, don't you be with an emotionally unregulated woman. That woman could be your downfall. That woman can go out and be starting fights. I had a friend that was his wife was like that. I remember uh, we were all out and his wife, you know, she's an attractive woman, big booty. And someone felt on her booty. And she was like, you going to let them feel on my ass. And he's like, who? Who felt on your ass? I don't know, but someone felt my ass and you need to check them. And then this is what she did because she was emotionally unregulated. She's like, someone here has felt on my ass and my husband's going to whoop your ass. Who did it? And she went around looking at dudes. Poking them in the chest, like, did you feel on my ass? Did you feel on my ass? And I was just sitting there, like, I was there with a date. Me and my date looked at each other, and she said, This poor man, this ain't the first time he's been through this. I was like, Nope, and it won't be the last. And it got to the point where the establishment that we were in asked him to leave because she was causing such a commotion. And then she's like, oh, they going to throw us out, but they can feel on my ass, but they going to throw us out. Fuck this place. We don't need to be up in here. They don't need our money. And I was like, so we all because we all came together. I drove. So we all had to leave at the same time. And this was before Uber and Lyft and stuff. And I was driving them back to their house. And the whole time she was just going off. Feeling on my ass. And then she was like, blamed him. See, your fault. You let men disrespect me. And he's like, you don't even know who felt on your ass. She's like, that ain't the point. The point is someone felt on my ass and disrespected me right in front of you. And you did nothing. And then I pulled up to her house and she got out. 
stormed into the house and slammed the door. Needless to say, they are divorced. He had reached a point where he could no longer deal with it. He had reached a point because, see, when you deal with the emotionally irregulated, unregulated, you're in a situation where chaos literally follows you. This guy actually, what he did is he he left America and he moved to the Philippines and he met a Filipino woman and he's never been happier. She's calm. She's reasonable. She's emotionally regulated. So all you folks in there talking about, it wasn't about the cold French fries. It was about the disrespect. Oh my God. Really? Once again, and I've said this in this video before, if you remove the cold French fries from the chain of events, would this thing have happened? No, it wouldn't have. So it is very much about those cold French fries and each successive event that happened in this episode of life that resulted in this man dying. See, one of the things that I have noticed since I have lived because this is where I used to live. I used to live in Sandy Springs. Is the people are emotionally regulated. I never. Ever. Saw any. Ghetto behavior in my neighborhood. Never saw it. Never saw a husband and wife in my neighborhood. Having a fight in their front yard. Never happened. I never. Things that I routinely saw in the West End. Never happened. I never saw anyone disrespecting anyone. I never, because see, this is the way that the emotionally regulated people work. There's a protocol that they're going to complain. And they, they, there's a chain of, of, of protocol. There, there's a certain way that they're going to handle a situation versus keeping it real. Keeping it real. We got to keep it real. Keep it real dumb. Keep it real criminal. Keep it really, really bad. So, once again, look at these gorgeous mansions. These are mansions. These are estates. These houses are sitting on acres. And understand that if you are an emotionally unregulated person, you will never, ever live here. It ain't happening. Because you don't have the emotional intelligence to regulate yourself. Because you feel if somebody says something off to you, that is worth taking their life. Because they just said something disrespectful to you. That roundhouse right there, Dallas Austin owns that. Just saying. Just giving you a little info. But once again, with the emotionally unregulated with the emotionally hostile with the emotionally reckless this is who you see going to jail this is who you see consistently in trouble this is who you see consistently having these episodes this is who you consistently see being in these situations where they're getting in trouble they're going to jail the police pull them over. They want to get rowdy with the police because the police pulled me over. I've seen the videos and I'm just sitting there like, just give the police officer your driver's license. Take your ticket and drive home. No, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh. My name is Cleotis Jones and this is how we handle stuff. You don't disrespect Cleotis Jones. No, 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 no. It's going to cost you your ass, my brother. And like I see with these people, like once again, I peep the comments. I see that some of y'all are here and I don't, I'm like, y'all need to leave the channel. Because <laughs> see, the things that I teach, I teach you how to be pragmatic. I teach you how to be responsible. I teach you how to build. I teach you. And if you're emotionally reckless, emotionally unregulated, if you're one of these hot heads, you will never be able to manage this process because you have low impulse control. You're a hothead. 
you, you, man, I'm, I'm like, people are dying over cold French fries. And y'all want to like, well, it had nothing to do with the French fries. It had everything to do with this. Like, once again, I have seen um, people be reckless. I have seen what happens when people are emotionally unregulated. And it's nothing good. It's nothing but chaos. It is craziness. It is madness. This is why they want to get all Bruce Lee on people. This is why they want to bring out the Kung Fu. Because they're emotionally reckless. They're emotionally unregulated. And it is sad. It is really, really sad. That we have so many people who want to, because, you know, this this like this girl on Dr. Phil's show, uh, Bad Barbie, cash me outside. I'm going to put these hands on you, right? This whole culture of being ghetto and redneck and being a rebel rouser, if you will look. Consistently, these people are at the bottom of society. They're the dregs of society. They don't have nothing because they can't build anything. These people are crazy. These people have a reckless nature. These people are not someone I want to live next to. I'm just going to keep it a buck. I've got a video on this channel talking about why I refuse refuse to live in the hood because here's the thing you could find you some cheap rent in the hood and you could be living in the hood and you can run across one of these emotionally reckless people and your ass can end up dead because you offended one of these people just like this young man you know and i saw it, it's like how did he end up outside you know, once again, trying to blame the victim, trying to blame the victim. Once again, that's me down there. That's when I had the red X5. Um, one of the things is env environments. Like I said, I lived in this neighborhood 13 years. I never saw a husband and wife have a fight. I've never, I never even heard anyone slam a door. You just did not see that behavior in this neighborhood. There's a reason why. If you're a person that has these proclivities of acting that way, you're just not going to make it in this neighborhood. You don't have enough emotional stability to actually build something to create the money that where you can buy into this neighborhood. And I, I'm showing you this for a reason, because environments matter. Because I saw several, several comments like this kind of stuff happens all the time. Man, they ratchet over here. Someone left a comment talking about she knew a McDonald's owner and he was just as ratchet as the people in this neighborhood. Environments matter. Environments are super critically important. Environments are everything. Environments are the reason that some people cannot make it environments because once again there are people who are on different scales of being emotionally unregulated and there are some people who are at that tipping point where they're influenced by their environment if they were put in a better environment they would not behave that way they just wouldn't behave that way but once again like i said i saw the comments i was like oh my goodness we got some of these emotional, because when this attorney, and let me go ahead and set the scene. This attorney and I were at a very nice restaurant. And then when she started talking about disrespect, disrespect, I was just sitting there like, you are an attorney at a law firm in Atlanta and you own this shit. Oh my God. And it completely changed how I felt about her. And shortly after that, um, we, we stopped dating because it was that mindset. Because in the hood, the only thing you have is your person. 
And if someone disrespects your person, that means this person got to die or catch these hands. I mean, just to actually think about that, that someone is going to catch these hands because they said something to you. They have said something to you. They're going to catch these hands. If that's all you have in life is your person. I feel very, very sorry for you. That's a very flimsy currency to have. That's a flimsy way to run your life. That is just, man, that is sad. That is really, really sad. But once again, these folks got to get all Bruce Lee. Get Bruce Lee on them. You remember Kung Fu Theater when they used to not have the soundtrack meshed with the film and they'd be like moving their mouth and then the voice starts a little few seconds later. I love myself some Kung Fu Theater because Bruce Lee would be talking junk. Then he was like wag his finger like come here for this ass whooping. Come here. And that, that's what I see a lot of people trying to get all Bruce Lee on folks. They're, they're actually, you know, uh, I remember years ago, I was having a conversation with a coworker and he said, violence is the antithesis of many of the things I hold dear. I'm not a violent person. The last time I was in a fight was the military and basic training. And that was 1985. That was the last time that I was in a physical altercation. And guess what? I was fighting a dude from up top, dude from New York City, because I said something to him. And you know what dude did? I said something to him, and I walked away, and then he comes up behind me, and then I turn around, and he just socks me in the face. At that point, because when he saw that his best look his best lick didn't even phase me. I whooped his ass. I whooped his ass because he hit me. Not because he said something to me, but he came up and hit me. Last fight that I was ever in. And then I was beating the shit out of him. And then everyone pulled me off of him. And it's like, hey, man, you, you don't need to mess with them Bama boys. He from Alabama. They cock strong down there, as you just saw. But once again, you know, I grew up, you know, it was funny. Fighting in Alabama is different than fighting in New York. We used to fight for fun. <laughs> we used to have these games where we like slap each other. Who's, who could slap each other? Hard? We used to do all kinds of stupid stuff as kids. But these was childhood games. And there was no malice. No one ever got shot. No one ever died. Now, I will say there was one game, the dozens. The dozens where you would start talking about somebody. If you were really good at the dozens, there was many times that <laughs> physical altercations could jump off because you said something so foul, so messed up. And I was kind of good at the dozens because I was intelligent. So I could say things. I could say things. But once again, guys, it was over the cold French fries. And there was no reason for her son to come down there and get all Bruce Lee on that guy. There was no reason, no reason whatsoever. So for those of you who are um, looking to change your life, go below and enroll in the Intellectual Property School or the program. Because we got some information, some training and some stuff to set you up. For life to set you up to make sure that you can be a productive citizen. And who knows? Maybe in the future, you could be living in a neighborhood just like this. Once again, if that's something you desire, because everyone doesn't desire to live in a big ass house. I got to say, uh, I did it. It was fun. And more than likely, my next house will not be that big. Because I had rooms I didn't even go in. I mean, literally, I didn't use 60% of the house. So unless I have a family, 
I'm probably not going to get a house that big. But it was fun. It was nice. It was comfortable. But once again, everyone doesn't wish to have a big house. Everyone doesn't wish to have a fancy car. They just wish for money in the bank and to be free. And that's what we're going to do in the program or the Intellectual Property School.